Welcome back everybody. In this episode we're talking tyre safety. I bet many of us have been travelling around for years and years and years and other than having a quick look at our tyres, haven't really thought too much about it and if something was to go wrong, haven't really thought about actually changing these tyres out and the age of them as well. So let's go through a few tips and tricks and things to watch out for as we show you how. So this is our 2013 model Jayco Swan Outback and we're running the standard alloy rims that most of them come with. Now this camper is between 8 and 9 years old and these tyres are still original. And while they look completely fine and don't have any visible cracking or excessive or abnormal wear, these tyres actually need to be replaced. The rule of thumb is you should look to replace your tyres every 5 to 7 years. Once you start getting up towards the 10 year mark, you are greatly increasing the chance of a failure while you're traveling, particularly in hot weather. Now, did you know that every tire that is manufactured has a date stamp on it? And it's very easy to go through and check when your tires are being manufactured to make sure you're within that five to seven year bracket. Now, if you've got a Jayco camper trailer or caravan with the standard GT radial tires on them, without the white lettering on the outside, you won't be able to find the tire stamp because it's on the opposite side where you've got the raised white lettering. I'll show you right now. This caught me out because I could not find the day stamp on the two rims that are on the actual camper trailer itself. But our spare tire does have the white lettering exposed and that is a side that has the date stamp. So you'll see on the tire, there's a tire size, which is something around an LT23575 R15. Now, just before that, you'll see a little rectangle which will have four numbers in it. So in our case, we've got 4213. Now what that actually means is this particular tyre was manufactured on the 42nd week of 2013. So that makes it pretty much eight years old. So what you'll find is with your regularly driven vehicles, you'll typically wear the tyres out before they reach that critical date mark. So it's usually not such a concern. It's if you've got a car lying around, I've got a VK Commodore over in the shed, which hardly ever gets driven, or you've got trailers where the wear isn't really all that high, that is very easy to run those tyres out so they're 10 or 15 years old before you even realise. So it's at this point here I'd strongly suggest to anyone with a Jayco camper trailer, if you're watching this and you've got an older model, double check your tyres, make sure they're within that age range. If not, head down to your local tyre shop and get them changed as soon as you possibly can. Before you go on a trip or you get new tyres fitted, you want to see how the tyres are wearing in the particular van that you've got at this point in time. If the tread through the top of the tyre is uneven, that could point to some alignment issues or incorrect pressures. The general consensus with these vans is you run between 40 and 45 psi and you obviously have that 4 psi rule. That is that you check the pressures when these tyres are stone cold and you drive for an hour or 100 kilometres and then check the pressure again. And you want that pressure to have increased by around about 4 psi. If it's gone a lot more than 4 psi, your tyres are running too much pressure. Another thing I also do is when I stop after driving for a few hours is I check the wheel and around the bearing cap itself to make sure that it's not too hot. If it is burning hot, that is an indication that the brakes could be dragging or that the bearings themselves need servicing or are getting extremely hot, which is not a good thing at all because it's quite common to have a catastrophic failure where you actually lose a wheel just from the heat that's generated, you brake studs and you're in a lot of trouble. Now because I'm always hunting around for a bit of a bargain or something that might come through marketplace, I've come across these. This is a full set of Jayco rims and tyres off our 2021 model. They're pretty much brand new. The owner took them off to change the wheels over to match his ute. So I picked these up for $300. So you've got three wheels, all with the brand new tyres. They're still the GT radials that Jayco fit as a standard and they will bolt straight onto this camper trailer with no problems at all. 
The good thing is they're the full black face as opposed to the machine face that the older models have. So it gives a bit of an update to the van as well and makes it look a little bit newer. So that's a win-win all the way around. And while I'd normally just jack this camper trailer up in the shed using our trolley jack, I thought it'd be a good exercise to get out the standard Jayco jack and see if it will actually lift the camper trailer up because there's some discussion around that these really aren't up to the task. So let's go through this. I'll show you what to do if you get a flat on the road and how to go about changing the wheel as we go and upgrade our tyres and wheel combo at the same time. I just thought I'd mention, if you are looking to upgrade your rims and tyres, uh, on most of these that are six stud, the stud pattern is six by 139.7, which is common across most four wheel drives. The thing you have to be careful with is the offset because these run a zero offset, which is sort of close to uh, GU or GQ Patrol. However, most modern four wheel drives these days run a more aggressive positive 25 to 35 or even 43 offset, which will sit the wheels too far in. If you've got a five lug pattern, Typically that's a forward stud pattern, however you do need to confirm that. It just depends, particularly on the older models, they do vary quite a lot. And the same goes to wheel bearings. You need to pull your wheel bearings off, check what they are because they do vary through all the different models and ages of camper trailers and caravans. So in most caravans and camper trailers, you have your standard wind up scissor jack. And this is very similar to what you get in your normal vehicles as well. Uh, this particular version is for the Jayco camper trailers where it has a little assembly that goes onto the jacking point and the riser that goes with it. Now I suspect you can only jack it up just enough to get that wheel up off the ground if you're on perfectly level ground that is stable. So if you're in something with some hollows or wallows or it's likely that this jack will sink down, for example the grass that we've got here, you need to make sure that you carry around some timber blocks with you so that you can lift the jack up and better disperse the load around on the surface that you're jacking off. So carry around some timber blocks. These are handy for everything, including making sure that your jockey wheel is the same, doesn't sink down into the ground and you can't actually lift your van back up once it's settled over a few days when you go to put it back on your vehicle. Now in the standard kit which is located in your boot of your Jayco camper trailer and caravan, you obviously get the tyre lever and also the winder mechanism itself that goes onto the jack. So we'll do this the old fashioned way with the Jayco supplied gear, however we will use this block of wood and we'll see if we can actually get this up off the ground and get the wheels changed over. Now in reality, the Jayco jacks are really there if you are stuck and you've got nothing else to use. I think it'd be a good idea to upgrade to a hydraulic bottle jack as a bare minimum. The KO jack is fantastic because it comes with a whole series of extensions and bits and pieces, including one extension which goes onto the direct jacking points of these Jayco camper trailers and I believe the caravans as well. And I'll show you that jacking point shortly. Now safety first before you get too excited, particularly if you're on unlevel or uneven ground. It's a good idea to leave your camper trailer or caravan attached to your tow vehicle if you possibly can. Also make sure you've got the handbrake up and most importantly chalk the opposing wheel that you're jacking and lifting up off the ground. That will make sure it doesn't move around and doesn't slip off the jack itself. Another good idea before you jack it up off the ground is to loosen the wheel nuts. It's a lot easier to do it when it's on the ground, particularly if they're really tight and you need to get that leverage and push to crack these nuts. So use your standard tyre lever if that's all you've got. If you've got a reasonably modern Jayco camper trailer or caravan, the wheel lug nuts are 19mm and I've got a rattle gun here which will get these off reasonably easy, assuming they're not super duper tight. Looking in from the back of the caravan or camper trailer, you'll see these blocks hanging down with a little lug on them. These are your jacking points to the chassis of the Jayco camper trailers and caravans. Now interestingly, a few days ago a post popped up regarding these particular jacks and jacking points. And I realised when I recorded this video a few weeks ago, I had this around the wrong way. So if you see some shots where the jack is sitting under the jacking point here and facing towards the rear of the van so that it's parallel, that is incorrect. What you need to do 
is you put it in so that the jack is perpendicular to the van, which makes a lot of sense because it's a lot easier to wind it up from the outside. So I'm just gonna quickly edit in the correct way to put the jack in so it makes life a lot simpler for you. So it's a simple case of placing the timber blocking or just the jack itself under the jacking point of the caravan. I find it's a lot easier just to wind the jack up by hand outside of the van so you get it up to roughly the right height so you don't have to wind it up and it's wobbling around underneath the jacking point itself. Now that you've got the jack firmly in place so you can't wobble it around and it's nice and stable, it's a simple case of putting the winding rod into the end of the jack and winding it up. And you just want to get the wheel an inch or so up off the ground so that you can safely take it off. If you need to and it settles down while you're doing a wheel change, you can always wind it up that little bit more, but you don't want to lift it so high that the van becomes unstable. Another thing I should add is you could potentially jack the van up via the spring perches underneath. Do not do it by the axle itself as you could bend that axle and put everything out of alignment. However, in this video, we're using the standard jacking points to keep it all nice and simple and straightforward for those that haven't done it before. And now back to your regularly scheduled program. With the wheel up off the ground, it's a good idea to give it a bit of a shake around. Make sure there's not too much movement in the bearings. These are actually really good. Give it a bit of a spin. There's a little bit of drag on the brake here, but it's not too bad really. So now it's just a case of releasing all the lug nuts, taking the wheel off and getting the new wheel back on. I always put the lug nuts on by hand to make sure you're not cross-threading the stud itself. And it's a good idea to seat at least two opposing nuts to make sure the wheel's on and nicely centered with the hub. And in reality, you don't really need to use a rattle gun or an impact wrench. By the time you've got them this far, it's a simple case of just going around with your socket wrench, your tire iron, or the breaker bar, just to get it all nicely seated. Then once you drop the trailer back down onto the ground, you do your final tightening sequence, which is every second nut on the way around to make sure that they're evenly torqued up from side to side and across and around the wheel. Now we just remove the jack stand from under the axle and drop it all back down. And then you go through and do your final tightening of the lug nuts themselves. I do every second one and given I have a torque wrench as well, I will do these to 120 Newton meters, which seems to be the torque specs for an Outback Swan. However, I strongly suggest if you don't have an owner's manual, you contact Jayco and clarify that with them, because it will depend on how many lug nuts you've got. If you've got a five lug nut van or different size studs, the torque specs will vary. So we'll go through, button these up, and then I've got the other two wheels to change, and the little upgrade is done. And I'll do a final pass doing every single nut just to make sure I haven't missed one along the way. And now you can't forget the spare. That looks much better and we've now got another six or seven years of tire life left. How good is that? And now you're ready to pack your jack and everything away in the boot and you're ready to roll. To be honest, I had no issues with this jack. I'd imagine if you're in some pretty bad ground, maybe it's not the best thing in the world, but for the vast majority of people, this does the job and it wasn't all that hard at all. If you've got a block of wood, that obviously makes life a little bit easier but I think fit for purpose for 90% of the time, it does a job. I'm all about having multi-purpose tools. So if you buy a bottle jack, you might look to put that in your four wheel drive with all the accessories you need or a high lift jack that you can also use on the van. Just be really careful with high lift jacks on caravans, the same as a four wheel drive in that it doesn't move and then slam into the bodywork and destroy your side panels. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this. It was a little bit of fun and we finally updated the look of the van just that little bit more. If I spend money, I'd like to make it at least look a little bit different. And in this case, we've lifted it up a few years and it's looking a little bit fresher. Some people probably like the machine look of the older wheels, but I actually like the full black and that goes with our wheels on the Pajero as well. So we've now got a fairly nice combo to be cruising around in. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. Put a few comments below if you've got any other tips and tricks in relation to all your tyres, wheels and bits and pieces. We'll do a full maintenance video somewhere down the track when I've got a little bit more time. And most importantly, share this around if you think someone might benefit from it. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on more content that's coming up on the Jayco camper trailers and also a whole heap of other bits and pieces that we do, including some four wheel drive trips and camping trips away. So thanks for watching. And as I always say, get out there, stay safe and have fun. We'll catch you next time.